afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this presentation. So, my talk will be like this. I will make an introduction, and then I will present two recent work done by my PhD student on two kinds of materials. One is made from cobalt, because you know Morocco are, is uh, producing cobalt and phosphate. That's why we are working on this kind of materials. The first one is a lyrate structure, B-dimensional structure, and the second one is three-dimensional structure, phosphate. So, the big challenge, as you know, the big challenge of the 21st century is to improve or to create new, new energy storage technologies. There are a lot of technologies, but uh, I am focused on electric chemical energy storage. There are mainly two uh, challenges. One is to slowly move from uh, fossil energy to renewable energy to wind, solar, and ocean. And this needs a megawatt hour storage system, but also to, to move from uh, thermal, uh, thermal vehicles to electrical vehicles. Uh, let me remember that if you burn one liter of gasoline, you produce more than 700 uh, liters of carbon dioxide. This means a big, big uh, problem of environmental issue. So, uh, India has talked a lot about lithium. Lithium battery is re really highly commercialized in uh, laptops, uh, cellular phone, vehicles, and so on. But there are many, many uh, challenges and many problems on this technology. The first one is safety issue. There are a lot of problems, you know, I think if you follow the news, there are a lot of problems of uh, laptops or electrical vehicles. And uh, in December 2012, there are a big problem with the Japanese all uh, Nippon Airways. And more recently, if you uh, uh, look uh, at the news also, there are some guy uh, smoking the electronic uh, cigarette has a big problem in his face because the explosion of lithium ion batteries. So the safety problem is very, very big challenge of no, no, to stop smoking, I just says. <laughs> <laughs> it's better. <laughs> so, <laughs> the action for safety is one to replace the liquid uh, organic uh, electrolyte by some polymers or some ionic conducting membrane or something like that. And the second one is to replace, you know, all practically all uh, lithium ion battery now are uh, uh, composed from lithium cobalt oxide, from oxide in general. And the big challenge, the action is to replace this cathode material releasing oxygen that causes uh, this inflammability by some polyanionic material. That's why we are also working on phosphate. There are also many works on fluorophosphate and silicate. The second challenge is the price of lithium. There are a lot of stress on lithium resource. So if this is the data on 2012, if you compare some raw material coming from lithium or from sodium, you see that lithium is much, much more expensive than sodium, ion, sodium carbonate. And also, if you make some, uh, uh, some calculation or some, uh, uh, giving some data, the abundance of sodium is much higher than that of lithium. And you, lithium is concentrated also in some uh, area in South America. So this is also a big problem to have to, to to sell this resource. Uh, however, uh, on the contrary, sodium is, resource is available over everywhere, even in ocean, so you can have it everywhere. Uh, and we are talking here about stationary storage, and one of the main uh, parameter for choosing the good uh, energy storage system is the cost. And looking at this slide, we can say really that sodium ion battery is a good choice in the, in the cost point of view. Okay, sodium ion battery. Let me remember what is a sodium ion battery. It's like all batteries, composed from anode, cathode, and electrolyte. If graphite can be used very easily as anode materials, it can intercalate lithium with reversibility, he cannot be used in sodium ion batteries. Only hard carbon can be used. Hard carbon means not crystallized carbon. And there are a lot of works on electrolyte, electrode materials. And if we see, Elias show something like this, 
if we see the uh, papers from 1979 to 2014, there are not a lot of paper in this period because lithium ion batteries are coming at this period. And I personally work on this sodium ion battery in 1996, but at this time there are a lot of problems with the electrolytes. So we put in the trash and we start at this time by lithium ion batteries. And at the end of 2010, there are a big, big increase of papers on sodium ion batteries in cathode, anode, and so. At the same time, in the patent, if you see the patent here, there are no patents in sodium ion batteries here, but in 2010, we have a lot of patents coming, especially from Japan, from China, and from USA. This means that you are some many work over the world are, go, go, the, are done in, lithium, in sodium ion batteries. And I saw this in November 2015, the big um, European network uh, fabricate this prototype of sodium ion batteries with 90 watt hour per kilogram and more than 2,000 charge charge cycle. This is really, really good, good news for sodium ion activity. So let me start by this compound. Of course, the, be the, the best, the well-known compound for lithium ion batteries is like LiCO2. That's our first thing is about amoligos on sodium ion batteries, sodium cobalt oxide. But sodium, if lithium cobalt oxide, we have a flat curve like this. For sodium ion batteries, we have a lot of steps. You see here more than nine steps, nine different uh, potential jump, which is not good for application. So the, I, the aim of for our, our study, even if we have more than 145 milliampere hour, but the problem is the structural steps, which is not good, as I said before. And the idea was to replace partially cobalt, but uh, some, uh, some new compound, and our activity are focusing the cobalt, manganese, nickel for lithium. We do the same thing for sodium. So synthesis of this material, we start by some acetate from sodium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt. We use Solgel method. Uh, in uh, using uh, uh, citric acidic as chelated agent and then calcination at 800 degrees Celsius in 12 hours and we get these compounds. The uh, analysis of sodium by flam emission spectroscopy or the cobalt manganese nickel by ICP give us this formula with two thirds here nickel sodium. The X-ray shows that we have a well crystallized sample with uh, space groups P63MMC, and uh, from SEM we have uh, some homogeneous distribution of the particle size, but I would like to show you that when uh, refining the structure with the P2 phase, I will say what means P2 phase in the slide uh, after that, we have a good reliability, but we have a high coefficient of sodium, high uh, isotropic coefficient. This means that we have a high mobility of sodium and you have, have high mobility of sodium, that means that you can move and intercalate sodium very easily. So let me show you what means O2, O3, P3 type structure. It's a nomenclature used in 1980 by Delmas group, and we use this OP uh, related to the uh, nature of site of sodium. If you have sodium in octahedral site, we put O. If you have sodium in prismatic site, we put P. Three means that you have three slaves per unit cell. Three unit cell per unit, slave, unit cell. Here, for example, we have P2 because we have sodium in prismatic site, but we have A, B, B, E. We have only two uh, layers per unit cell. We have P2 and O2. You can see here very easily that if you have a sodium in P2 type structure, he can move from one side to other side by the rectangular uh, window. But if we have sodium in uh, octahedral site, we have to move through the triangular, which is much smaller. So it's very important to have prismatic site for sodium to have high uh, mobility and thus high power for our cell. So this is uh, the curves of uh, charge discharge uh, done in our lab. And uh, we use this type of electrolyte, but uh, we have to do many, many experience, many formulation of our electrolyte because it's very sensitive to hygroscope, to water, to many things. And as you see, we have a little bit better cycling curve comparing to uh, sodium cobalt, pure cobalt. Remember, with cobalt, pure cobalt, we have a lot of steps. 
And here we have only one step here around 0 0.5 and good reversible, cap reversible capacity. This is the cycling curve where we get uh, almost 110 milliampere over 90, 90 cycle and with the high efficiency. But this uh, results were uh, obtained when we cycle in the windows less than 4.2 volt. I will show you after that that when we, when we, when we go further to 4.2 volt, we get much more but with many problems. The efficiency is uh, around 99% uh, this is CV curves, and as you see, uh, this is the second cycle is in the green. We have three peaks, but in the cobalt pure phase, we have seven peaks with mini structural transformation. Here we have three peaks, 3.4, 3.69, and 4.05 with reversibility. And after 18 cycles, we get exactly the same uh, term, uh, CV uh, graph. This means that we have a good stability of our cathode materials. For the rate capability, C over 20 means that we charge or discharge in 20 hours. And when we go, are going faster until 2C, this means what we are charging and discharging in a half hour. We have a good capacity of more than 60 million per hour. And when we are back to our C over 20, we get the same. This means that our sample can be uh, cycled at very uh, high, uh, high uh, rate. Now, if we are cycling until 4.0 volt, we have this plateau which is, uh, um, reveals that we have uh, some electrolytes, elect electrolytes problems. So we get much more capacity, more 140, which is similar to lithium omnibus phase and high, high efficiency, but the problem, we have not a good uh, cyclability. So we, our job now, what I would like to, to show you what, what's happened, uh, sorry, Ah, we can change what from here. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> magic, yeah. Okay. So, our job at OEC is to understand what happened during cycling, during each stage of our uh, charge discharge, because if we understand what happened inside, we can uh, improve the performance just by adding to the, the process of fabrication of material or morphology or something like that. So what we do, we follow the, our material during each stage of our curves, during charge and discharge. The first thing is that we do some in-situ X-ray at this point in the curve. And the starting phase is P2 tape phase here. When charging during this charge process, we get almost the same structure. We don't have a lot of change of structure, which is good. At the end of charge, we have this phenomena we have some uh, faulty structure with many, many faults. But when coming back to discharge, this is starting material, this is the end of charge, and here, discharge until 2.0 volt, and we get the same X-ray than the starting part. That means that we have a good reversibility of the process. Now, I would like to show you also, also some hard XPS on samples during charge and discharge, and we follow more specifically the nickel, cobalt, manganese. We have nickel, manganese, cobalt in our structure, and when we are removing sodium, we would like to know which one of the ions are oxidized first. So, this is for cobalt. As you see, we have the main line at 799 uh, electron volt, and when charging, we have some shift of this peak. This means that we have oxidation of cobalt, 3 plus 2 cobalt, 4 plus during charge process. During discharge, uh, during discharge we have the reverse phenomena. <coughs> for the manganese, for the manganese during we have a main line at 642, which practically remain uh, unchanged during charge and discharge. This means that we have, we have manganese 4 plus, but manganese 4 plus doesn't participate in the electrochemical uh, process. But if we discharge until 2 volt, low, lower than the OCV, we start to have some shift. That means that we have maybe some reduction of manganese 4 plus. That's uh, exactly what, uh, similar to what we observe in spinal structure. 
for nickel, for nickel is much more complicated, but the uh, XP, uh, XP, uh, hard XPA show that we have a little bit uh, no change in the position of the main peak here on the satellite also. This means we have nickel troplus, but in uh, some uh, recent, uh, recent paper or recent work done in this kind of material, we have also some nickel triplus, nickel four plus uh, redox couple. Here I summarize for all the three, the three uh, transition metal ions, nickel and cobalt and manganese, and we can say that we have uh, manganese four plus in our structure, it doesn't change, and we have a cobalt working, and I have also some reduction of manganese at low voltage. So this is what I have to, to, to talk about the lyrid structure, these uh, compounds. Let me move now to the, uh, this phosphate. Why Nazican type structure? Because Morocco is also producing a phosphate, but also because uh, phosphate are fast sodium super ionic conductor. And if we'd like to use some samples of some electro, uh, material in cathode material, we should have high uh, mobility, high conductivity of the species. And this framework, this uh, 3D framework, has very uh, efficient sodium uh, conductor. And we have an open structure because we can have no big change in the volume. This is also needed for producing uh, cathode materials. And a lot of uh, Mor Moroccan research work was done in this type of, of material. If you look at the library, Moroccan libraries, from 1970 or 80, there are a lot of works on Nazicon type structure, but only structure, no electrochemistry. That's why we are trying to put out some new material new old material, but given function to this material as active materials on sodium ion batteries. And we, perf we have uh, uh, studied this solid solution, but with AB initial calculation, we select this composition because it shows the better uh, sodium uh, stability in the structure. For synthesis, it was uh, done by solid state reaction by heating the raw material, sodium carbonate, iron oxide, and titanium oxide with phosphate. And we have a lot of thermal treatment. The big problem of Nazican type structure is that they are difficult to prepare, very difficult. And as you know also, phosphate are not good electronic conductors. So we, are, uh, we use it some carbon coating to uh, enhance the conductivity of studied materials. Okay, this is the redevelopment refinement of the structure. The structure contains a lot of atoms, of ions, and it's very difficult also to, to, uh, to perform uh, refinement of uh, position and occupation of all these uh, type of uh, tip ions. And here we, we got uh, a good uh, refinement by this space group and these unit cell parameters. Uh, some characterization by Mossbauer. Here we have a peak in uh, do in uh, uh, performed in uh, Montpellier, and uh, the the convolution showed that we have 90 percent, 92 percent of iron troplets in our structure. This was confirmed also by Manitis, which have a revised uh, behavior, and the existence of carbon in our structure was also detected by Raman spectroscopy, which shows the well-known two bands D and G. This is also a TM picture, which shows the sample covered by some carbon here. This means that we put 15% of carbon, and carbon still remains in the structure after heating. This is the cycling. During discharge of these cathode materials, we have first plateau here at 2.2 volt, and second plateau at low, temperature, at low voltage. This means that this sample can be, could be used as anode materials in this, this voltage plateau, and also as medium to cathode materials in this such plateau. But we focus on this part of our, uh, of our electrochemistry, and you see here, we have this discharge, first discharge and recharge. And as you see, we have a good reversibility with very low polarization of our cathode materials. So we do also the test rate capability, and as you see, we go we start by C over 10, and we go until 5C. 5C means we charge and discharge in 20 minutes. And the capacity still stay constant, and when back to our uh, starting rate, we reach the same capacity. That means that our sample is like a, a strong, uh, strong cathode material. He can support high, uh, high, uh, high uh, 
uh, rates. So what happened during cycling? If you see here, we have some, some phenomena here, which means that we have first iron triplets reduce it to iron two plus, and then we have a plateau for titanium four plus titanium three plus. From X-ray, from X-ray here we have a discharge and charge, and you see we have a really, really uh, no change in our structure. It's normal because we have uh, from rock 3D from rock, and we, he can accommodate <coughs> sodium without any big problem, with any big change in unit cell parameters. So let me conclude uh, by saying that uh, because of the cost of sodium compared to lithium uh, the, the, and the abundance of, uh, and size of sodium, I think that sodium ion batteries are particularly interesting for uh, large scale uh, grade uh, storage. They are not, for this, there are huge LD activity on sodium ion battery, especially on anode, cathode, binder, and electrolyte, and a lot of work has been done because we have a, a very complicated system comparing to lithium. I presented here two types of materials. One is lyrid, bidimensional, and second one is three-dimensional, which shows, I think, a good uh, uh, preliminary, preliminary uh, results. And the big thing that I would like to ask to the student is to do a lot, to spend a lot of time to understand what happened during charge, during discharge, in the anode side, cathode side, electrolyte, to, uh, to improve the actual energy performance. Finally, I would like to uh, acknowledge my two PhD students, with that, uh, the, which will defend uh, their PhD this year, Seham Dubaji, which is in Kotutel, is a sandwich uh, thesis between uh, University of Qadi Iyad in Montpellier, and Seham Dubaji working on oxide. I also would like to thank our partner from Uppsala University in Sweden, and the University of Montpellier, and also Erizan and Senior for the financial support, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.